this video is beginning what can be a very challenging type of problem for students and I am hoping that I can give you some uh, skills to be able to approach these uh, with a little bit more confidence and success and that's dealing with a solubility constant KSP now insoluble salts are actually slightly soluble so with an equilibrium is set up between the solid and the aqueous. If you look down here at this example, maybe this will help. So here I have lead to chloride, which if you've memorized your solubility rules, is going to be a slightly soluble salt. So its solubility S is given by the molarity of the salt that became aqueous. It's important that you use the symbol S for solubility and I'll go more into detail on that as we move through these next few videos. But I recommend using S because if you're asked for solubility or given solubility, it helps you know where to use those values. So I recommend you use the symbol S for solubility. Now, back to this reaction. When ionic compounds dissolve, they don't stay as intact formula units. Ionic compounds dissociate into cations and anions. Okay, so in this case, we'd have lead ion and chloride ion. So what, we, what we're going to do is we're going to ignore this part of it and we're going to focus on solid going to its aqueous or dissociated ions. And there's two things you're going to, really three things you might be doing. Given a solubility, so we'll add that. You could be asked for a solubility. You could be asked whether or not when two soluble salts are mixed together, whether precipitation will occur. Or you might be given the solubility and asked to determine the KSP value. Now, for this second one, whether or not a precipitation will occur, um, what we're going to be doing is comparing K to Q. So if K is greater than Q, that means for our starting amount measured by Q, remember, we have our reactants are greater than our products. And so that means we're going to shift to make more product and no, um, no precipitation will occur when K is greater than Q. If K is less than Q, that means K is too big, that means I have too much product, my products are greater than my reactants, so it's going to shift in the direction of my reactants to consume product, form reactant. Well, since my reactant is a solid in this case, I'm going to form a precipitate. So that's a yes on that one. Okay, so that gives us a little start there. Let's take a look at some more terminology. The solubility is the amount of an uh, insoluble salt that will form a saturated solution at a given temperature. Solubility depends on temperatures, Ks depend on temperatures. So we have to give that temperature. Be really, really careful to watch the units that are asked for. Um, you will be doing your calculations in molarity, but you may be given or asked for grams per liter. So you want to pay very close attention to that. Now, as we're solving these, the key is this. The presence of some solid, so if I have a beaker with a solution, if I have at least some solid, I know that I have a saturated solution 
because there's some that did not dissolve. So this is evidence of that the solution is saturated. And that's the point at which we will be doing these KSP values. Okay, now um, I want to set up a little bit of a rice framework here for us. So I'm going to get myself a little bit more room here. Let's do this under this lead chloride one so I can give you an idea of what we're going to be doing. Now, I've got my solid lead chloride. We're going to be, remember, just ignoring this step here, this part here. I don't care about it as much, but I think it might help you understand. So as long as I have some, I don't care how much. So I literally write here, who cares? I don't care, as long as I have some. Now, I'm going to initially start with none. This is that nanosecond, that instant before any has dissolved. Now, since I have a one to one mole ratio here and here, you can see it in both cases, this would be plus, I get two chlorides. Notice that I broke it up into cation and anion. A uh, common mis uh, mistake students make is they try to do some crazy decomposition. My cation is lead to, my anion is chloride, I have two chlorides, I'm counting them. So I have a coefficient of two. So I'll get two chloride ions for every one lead ion. Okay, so that's why I have S here and two S for my chloride. Hopefully that makes a little bit more sense of these notes here that my solubility is equal to the aqueous lead chloride. That's a one to one mole ratio with lead ion and a two to one mole ratio with chloride ion. So let's do some examples, and I'm going to be focusing in right now. We'll do a lot of rice with this. So I'm going to focus in on KSP in terms of molarity. So if I have calcium sulfate, I'm going to get a calcium ion and a sulfate ion. So at the end, um, my KSP is going to be equal to my calcium ion at equilibrium, remember. You won't normally see that E there. I'm putting it there just to make a point. And my sulfate ion at equilibrium, okay? Now, in terms of the solubility, since I have a one-to-one -one mole ratio with calcium ion, calcium would be equal to the solubility. Since I have a one-to-one -one mole ratio with my sulfate, it's also equal to the solubility. So KSP is equal to S squared. Let's do another example here. I've got solid silver sulfate. So my cation is silver. My anion is sulfate. They're aqueous. Okay. And I have two silver ions. So separate into cation and anion first and then balance. And that will help you avoid some crazy decomp reaction. Okay. Now, KSP in terms of molarity. KSP is going to be silver ion plus, because we always include aqueous, but this is squared times my sulfate ion to the first. Now, some of you, we, remember we don't include solids in a KSP or any K, um, but some of you might be more comfortable putting this over one. And, and that's fine. You're welcome to do that. I don't usually do that. It's an implied one. There's nothing in the denominator because my reactants are solid there. 
So now, what is KSP in terms of the solubility? Well, silver has a 2 to 1 mole ratio, so it's 2S. For every one that goes into solution, I'll get two silver ions, and I have to square it. Sulfate is 1 to 1, so it's S. Most common, common mistake is you're going to forget to square your 2. So it's 2s squared. So it's 2s times 2s times s. So it's 4s cubed. So that's how um, KSP would relate on that one. Let's do um, one more quick one, and then I'm going to do a summary table. Again, this is talking about my solid salt. My cation is calcium ion. My anion is the phosphate anion. These are aqueous. I'm going to just make those assumptions right now. Anions have to be aqueous, right? Okay. So now I'm going to balance cation, split into anion, and then balance. That's a 3. This is a 2. Okay. So KSP in terms of molarity would be my calcium ion cubed times my phosphate ion squared. Well, since I have a 3 to 1 mole ratio, KSP in terms of solubility, I get 3 calcium ions for every 1 mole that went into solution, and I have to cube it. I have 2 phosphates for every one formula unit that goes into solution, and I have to square it. And again, be careful. I can't tell you how many students are going to see 3 times 3 and put 9. No, it's not 3 times 3. It's 3 cubed. 3 cubed is equal to 27, not 9. Just giving you a heads up. Seen this lots, probably done it before. Knowing my luck, did it in a video. Okay, so in this case, KSP would be 3S cubed times 4S squared. Okay, and so that means I'm going to have 27S cubed times 4 squared, excuse me, this is a 2 squared, I automatically made that 4, times 4s squared, and that's 108s to the fifth, okay? So, you know, my take home is this. Be really, really careful. It's 3 cubed, not 3 times 3. 2 is squared, so really be cautious with that. Now, a lot of people like to um, kind of memorize what these are, so I'm going to do a table. KSP in terms of solubility, if it's a one-to-one -one ion ratio, one cation to one anion, it's S squared. If it's a one-to-two or two-to-one ratio, it's 4S cubed. If it's a one-to-three or three-to-one, it's 27s to the fourth. I'll tell you, I, I haven't memorized this. I, I think it's kind of valuable. Um, so you may want to do that. If it's 2 to 3 or 3 to 2, it's 108s to the fifth. And if it's 1 to 4, I know that's a little unusual, but you might have something like um, tin 4 hydroxide or something like that. Or lead, you know, lead 4 nitrite. I don't know, I'm making stuff up. Okay, and that would be 256s to the fifth. Okay, so be really careful uh, how you use these. I, I have a tendency to set up a rice table, and in my work, I will be setting up rice tables. Again, I've mentioned in earlier videos, my framework, the doc saves everyone, and this is, we're going to see this framework is really helpful is sometimes a long and winding road, but when your mind's tired and you've been working hard on a test or you're exhausted at night after doing way too much homework, it that, that framework helps you lay out um, your problems. So we will forge 
into more detail in the next video in this series. Thank you so much for joining me.